Let's welcome to Mission Control via telephone right now, Dr. Ray Sedwick with the uh, uh, Spheres Rings Experiment. Welcome to Mission Control, Dr. Sedwick. All right, thanks very much. We're happy to have you here over the phone. Uh, of course, uh, the International Space Station getting ready to uh, celebrate the 15th anniversary of uh, its first element launch and uh, a host of research that's been going on aboard the International Space Station uh, uh, since uh, the first crew members arrived. Uh, Mike Hopkins worked with one of the experiments that uh, you're most familiar with a little bit earlier this week. Could you describe uh, uh, your experiment for us a little bit? Yeah, certainly. Uh, so our experiment uh, is called RINGS. Uh, it's an acronym. It stands for Resonant Inductive Near Field Generation System. It's a, uh, a piece of hardware uh, that is being used to demonstrate two technologies. One technology is what we refer to as electromagnetic formation flight, and that's the idea of using magnetic fields to control the relative positions and attitudes of spacecraft in a cluster. And the other technology is a form of wireless power transfer that would allow one spacecraft to transfer power uh, to another spacecraft. And uh, this uh, hardware is being flown as, a, uh, as an add-on to the already existing SPHERES facility uh, located on the ISS. And the one of those that makes piques my interest the most is the, uh, the power transfer. How do you transfer power between uh, satellites like this without any cables? Well, the, there are many mechanisms that one could consider for power transfer. This particular one uh, is essentially an inductive power coupling. It's the same type of power coupling that you would find in a transformer. Uh, if you have a, an electric toothbrush, probably the charging station and the toothbrush operate on the same principle. Uh, usually you have to have the primary and the secondary coils uh, of the transformer in close proximity to get efficient coupling, but if the coils are actually tuned to the same resonant frequency, then you can get a much more efficient transfer of power between the primary and the secondary, even if they are separated by a fairly substantial distance. That's really interesting. And, and so uh, what exactly are you trying to, use, to learn specifically with these experiments uh, as they relate to your two major objectives? Well, in truth, uh, the real advantage of operating on the ISS is not so much for the wireless power transfer. We can demonstrate that on the ground. Um, it's really focused on the electromagnetic formation flight uh, because while we can do experiments on the ground uh, to demonstrate the principle behind EMFF, as we call it, uh, we can only do it really effectively in kind of a two-dimensional uh, setup where we could have multiple vehicles traveling, you know, on a on a flat surface uh, on a what we call a flat floor uh, using air carriages, and we can demonstrate the principle, but the the dynamics becomes much more complicated when you consider kind of the full six degrees of freedom where we have three translational and three trans and three rotational uh, degrees of freedom for, for each object. So by being able to operate uh, in the microgravity environment of the ISS, we can really exercise the full control algorithm and dynamic capability of the system. I noticed watching the experiment uh, earlier this week that there were at times one of the uh, Rings experiments was uh, uh, anchored with uh, bungee cords. Uh, what's that about? So, um, so in in kind of developing the technology, we're we're pursuing kind of a crawl then walk then run paradigm. And the first thing we wanted to do this is our first science session. Uh, and in the first science session, to simplify uh, the dynamics and also to, to make it easier for, uh, for Mike to be able to conduct the experiments, we decided that, that anchoring one of the vehicles using the bungees and only have the other vehicle flying relative to it would be the easier way to go. Uh, in the second science session, uh, we will most likely have both of the vehicles untethered. Uh, and so Mike's going to have to be able, or whoever, I guess next time, it might not be him, will have to be uh, able to you know, initially position the vehicles and somewhat in the proximity of where we'd like them to be. And then because the control uh, happens as a result of forces generated between the vehicles, both of them are going to be moving. The dynamics is much more complicated, as is the control. 
Coincidentally, we're watching some recorded video right now that shows Hopkins positioning the two satellites without the bungee. So exactly what you were talking about that we're watching right now. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Where are you from? Where did you go to school? Where do you work now? Uh, sure. Uh, so I grew up in western Pennsylvania, and I did my undergraduate degree at Penn State University. Uh, and then I moved to Boston, and I did my master's and Ph.D. at MIT. Uh, and then I stayed there for 10 years after that. Um, I was the associate director of the Space Systems Laboratory uh, in the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics for 10 years. Uh, and then uh, in 2007, uh, I moved down to the University of Maryland, uh, where I established the Space Power and Propulsion Laboratory. Uh, but I still uh, work very closely in collaboration with the folks back at MIT, and they actually were co-developers along with a company called Aurora Flight Sciences in, in developing this technology. And do you have students involved in your research? I uh, sure do. So I had two students here, um, uh, primarily two students here, graduate students. Um, one completed his master's degree uh, over the summer. Uh, one is uh, working on her doctoral degree right now. And there have also been several students involved uh, at MIT working on the, the control algorithm development as well. Uh, uh, there's obvious benefits to the work that you're doing for uh, space vehicles uh, uh, in, in orbit or on long duration uh, uh, transfers to other locations in the solar system. Is there any application of your research uh, that will help folks here on Earth? Well, I think the primary um, way that it would impact, at least like the electromagnetic formation flight, it's really a, a, a space-dedicated technology. Um, where it, it could help uh, folks on the ground is, is in uh, providing more capability for future space systems. And so using clusters of spacecraft instead of individual spacecraft um, will allow um, certain capabilities like getting higher resolution images maybe on the ground or in space. Um, which could be used uh, for uh, improving, uh, you know, weather prediction, uh, things like that. The, the wireless power transfer um, has many terrestrial applications, and, and we're not necessarily uh, leading the charge on that. There are several companies that are pursuing development of that technology uh, to be able to power, let's say, small uh, electronics like your laptop or your cell phone without having to plug them in. Well, Ray Sedwick, uh, with uh, Spheres Rings, we want to thank you very much for joining us here at Mission Control and explaining your experiment. We've enjoyed watching it uh, on the downlinks uh, today, and now we understand more about it. Thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you.